but then their works do follow after them, or their works do follow them. I want to talk about one word. There's one word that I want you to carry from the celebration of her life today, and that one word is henceforth. Say henceforth. henceforth. That one word is henceforth. Uh, the beloved apostle John, an, an eyewitness of Jesus, um, writes this um, um, book of Revelation uh, while he was exiled uh, on the Isle of Patmos. And the intent is to give the um, real of Jesus Christ. He wants to give a warning to the unbeliever and give hope to the believer. Uh, he would have us to know that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that um, it's never over when we think it's over as we look upon life ceasing on planet level. He writes this to give encouragement and comfort to us that we might know that uh, it's not over as we would think that it's over. Uh, he wants us to know that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, when the heart stops beating and the lungs are no longer breathing and our vital organs have all shut down, that life has not really ended. He, he wants us to know that uh, these mortal bodies may decay and, uh, and, 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 and these corruptible bodies uh, will be deposited earth to earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, but it does not mean that it's over. He wants us to know that blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. And what he does is this. He sort of capsulizes and summarizes this eternal truth in one word. And that one word is henceforth. One word, henceforth. And the word henceforth is saying to us, that there is more. There is more when life ceases on these mundane shores. There is more when there's no longer breath in our bodies and as mortals we no longer breathe in God's fresh air. There is more for the child of God who loves God. There is more for the sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. There is more for the family of the Heavenly Father. There is more. And that one word henceforth speaks of the, the, how much more there is to our lives even after we shall have left these shores more. The word henceforth means from now on. Henceforth means from time forth. And what henceforth is really saying to us is taking on the connotation of the Greek term kairos, which means God's timing. So when we say henceforth, we're speaking of kairos, God's time. We're not speaking of chronos, which is man's time. You see, man's time deals with clocks and calendars. But God's time cannot be restricted by time nor space. Man's time, God's time cannot be restricted by man's level of understanding of whatever, whenever, however. We're talking about God's time. And so henceforth says to us that when chronos ceases, Kairos makes known to us that there is no end. We come to celebrate right now, Mother McElwain, because it is clearly understood, having been experienced by every one of us, that her life will not cease when she's, we, we make our way to the Zion Chapel Cemetery and deposit her to Mother Earth. Her life will continue on and on and on because of Hence, <laughs> from now on, let me give you a couple. I, 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 I got to cut it, got to cut it, cut it short. But, but while ministering to and praying with Celinda, Celinda gave me just a, just a marvelous, a marvelous account. She doesn't know how she gave such holy confirmation to this word henceforth because she told me for the past five years, every morning around 8 a.m., she and her mother would talk one with another. There's something special always about a mother and daughter relationship. So they would talk every morning around five, not 8 a.m. And there was an expectation that at 8 a.m. they would communicate with one another. Her mother was almost to squeeze her knuckles off. In other words, though she was non-communicable, though she was not able to verbalize what was going on, there was something taking place in the heavenlies. 
There was spiritual communication taking place between a mother and a daughter and it showed that everything is all right. Mother was saying to her at 8 a.m., daughter, I won't be able to do it physically with you anymore, but I just want you to know that all is well and everything is going to be all right because it's well with my soul. Yes! We were great, magnificent woman of quiet strength. But thank God Almighty, we will carry with us henceforth. The late Dr. Gardner C. Taylor once made this remark, Dr. Carter Brown. He said that uh, when I shall have passed away, uh, you will hear it said of me that Gardner C. Taylor is dead. He said, don't you believe a word of it. He said, I will be more alive then than I have ever been while walking the way of the earth because to be absent from the body it's, yeah. is to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we celebrate today. Let's put our hands together. We praise God today. We glorify his name because we know that when this earth, we got another building of God, a house not made by the hands of man, eternal in the heavens. Glory, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. A mother, a mother's infant daughter, only about a year and six months had passed away. A son brother had passed away, only about uh, 18 months old. And had a little sister about four years old. Her, other, her daughter, and so the, the, the mother was trying to explain on a kindergarten level where her little brother had gone. And uh, so she said to her, her, her daughter, about four or five years old, he, she said, uh, uh, your little brother is with the Lord. Mm. And, and so he's in heaven with God and having been read in Sunday school, she had learned something of heaven and so she knew that she could place it on that level of her understanding that your daughter, your, your little brother is with the Lord in heaven. And so it just so happened, uh, not long after that, um, uh, the daughter, about four or five years old, overheard her mother talking to a friend about how she's gonna miss her baby boy and how saddened she was of having lost him. And so after the telephone conversation was, was over, the little girl said, Mommy, did not you tell me that my little brother is in heaven with the Lord? She said, yes. She said, well, I overheard you say to somebody that you have lost him. <laughs> How can someone be lost when you know where they are? I come to tell you, I got to close here. I got to, I don't want to close. I don't want to close. I've got to tell you that we won't think of Mother McElwain as having, being lost, being lost, because we know where she is. So we're leaving here saying, here's for From now on, from now on, her corruptible body is now incorruptible. From now on, her mortality has been dressed up in immortality. From now on, she's within the pearly gates of heaven and she's walking the streets of glory. From now on, she's residing on the corner of Hallelujah Avenue and Blessed Boulevard. From now on, she's got on a long white robe and she has on her golden slippers. From now on, there's no more sickness and no more sorrow. From now on, there's no more grief and there's no more pain. From now on, there's no more trouble, trials, testing, and tribulation. From now on... From now on, uh, she's gone on uh, to the home prepared before the foundation of the world. I heard uh, John saying the same John uh, who wrote in the book of Revelations, uh, In my father's house are many mansions, uh, and if it were not so, I would have told you so. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again receive you unto myself so that where I am there ye may be also from now on she's living eternally in the presence with our God and I say to Mother McElwain today good night good night good night
Brother McElwain, I'll see you in the morning when the dark clouds roll away. In the morning, over yonder. Yeah! 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 Oh, yeah! In the morning, when the dark clouds shall roll away, it's for Rejoice that will be here when we all. 